Good evening and welcome as we join together for the uh, service of, uh, of uh, evening prayer. We're offering it each week uh, during these uh, challenging times. We pray that they are a comfort to you and a help to you. Uh, this is a perfect time of year for the service of light, as we call it, since it is the Easter season. So each Wednesday we'll be uh, utilizing some of our, our readings for the Easter uh, season. We join together in the service of light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Who 
led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are merciful and you love your whole creation and we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Just after sunrise, 
they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they lay him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, uh, let us greet one another with the official greeting of Easter time, uh, the one historically uh, shared by Christians at this time of year. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! My text is the uh, Gospel reading. There had not been time to render the customary services to the bruised, beaten, and torn body of Jesus. The Sabbath had intervened and the women who desired to anoint his body, well, they hadn't been able to, to do so. But now the Sabbath was over, so as quickly as possible, as quickly as possible, they set out on their sad assignment. One thing, one thought dominated their thinking. How they would get that large stone, that large round stone which had been placed against the front of the tomb rolled away. Because they had to get to the body, they had to get to the body which had been placed inside. But to their amazement, when they reached the tomb, the stone had already been rolled away. And they were greeted by an angelic messenger. And he delivered some rather amazing news. He said to them, do not be alarmed. You see Jesus of Nazareth, he's not here, he's risen. And uh, no doubt those women as they said about their task that morning, they were said they were depressed the disciples. They were nowhere to be found. They were behind locked doors somewhere. They, had, they were just sure that everything had ended in tragedy. In a travesty. But uh, that's kind of an analogy of life. These, uh, these latter days in which we find ourselves. For those women and for the disciples, everything was falling apart. And you probably agree with me, the same kind of seems like things that seem to like that for us too. Everything seems to be falling apart. Things just seem to be going from bad to worse. I don't know about you, but I've got to take I've got to take a break from watching the news. Because uh, I don't know. Every day there is, every day there is something new to worry about. And people will say, oh, it's okay, everything's going to be fine. While the death toll mounts, while our favorite haunts remain closed, and while the economy seems to be tanked. But here's the thing, according to the story, the situation that began with doubt and depression and anxiety and tragedy changed very, very quickly. Sadness and despair and fear turned into joy and courage. So what brought about the change? The answer, very simple. Any Sunday school student, any kid of science school can give you the, the right answer. Jesus rose from the dead. 
and of course the resurrection of Jesus, the central tenet of our Christian faith. And it changes everything. One of Ernest Poole's characters in one of his novels makes this statement. History is just news from the graveyard. History is just news from the graveyard. And I agree with that statement except one caveat. One graveyard in particular. Outside a particular city called Jerusalem. A garden tomb from which Jesus emerged on Easter Sunday morning. Easter is incredibly good news, incredibly good news about God, about you, about me. The world isn't just an insane asylum, some big accidents. We're not just on a whirling ball, uh, hurtling through space, out of control. Because at the heart of it all is a caring God who made himself known in his son Jesus Christ. And here is the core of our faith, the message that has comforted countless hearts for generations. It's the message that, that comforted and inspired those women and the disciples. Do not be alarmed. He is not here. He's risen. Christ was raised to be with us in the midst of life. And when we are confronted with all those things that trouble us, personal problems, war, terrorism, job loss, a tank economy, when everything seems to be going, as they say, to hell in a handbasket, uh, God says to us, do not be alarmed. We say to ourselves, well, what if this pandemic continues? What if the vaccine that they're trying to come up with doesn't work? What if there's a second wave? What if it morphs into something different? Something more lethal? What if the economy doesn't respond to efforts to revive it? And then there are all those things that were troubling us even before this thing started. All those personal problems, and those things that cause us concern, they didn't simply go away because a pandemic came around. Health concerns, family issues, financial concerns. God says to us, in all these situations, in the face of all these things, do not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. For Christ is risen. The bottom line is, God won. Jesus won the victory. And that means he's with us through thick and thin. And he's working his gracious purposes out. The greatest tragedy of all is that the disciples, and apparently the women, had forgotten his words. Jesus had told them that it would be this way. And in the midst of our personal problems, sometimes we forget too. And our vision gets clouded. And that's why the Paschal candle, which burns beside our Easter altar for seven weeks, it stands there as a reminder that Jesus is alive. That he took on the worst that this world could dish out. But he did it for a reason. To redeem us from sin, death, and the power of death. And here's a really great thing. Having done that, he walked out of the tomb alive on Easter Sunday morning. And he's with us every step of the way in good times and bad. That's the message of Easter. Some years ago in Washington, D.C., they were looking for a statue, a particular statue, for a building in Washington, D.C. that had been torn down some years before. And it was a city building, 
And in that city building was the statue of a former mayor of Washington, D.C., William Shepard. And they looked around, and they looked around, and they couldn't find this statue. So one thing led to another, and they eventually tracked the statue to a landfill. And there they found the statue of William Shepard, who had been mayor of Washington, D.C. They found him lying face down on a field. The body of Jesus was not misplaced. The body of Jesus was not placed in the wrong tomb, as some skeptics have suggested. The body of Jesus wasn't carted off to a dump to be consumed by wild animals or hidden somewhere by his disciples. It is the confession of the Christian church for 2,000 years that Jesus walked out of that tomb alive by the power of Almighty God. So that in our time of need, when we find ourselves lying face down for one reason or another, he's available to help us and to give us hope and to lift us up. Everybody's got something. Everybody's got some problem. Everybody's got some worry. Everybody's got some concern. Everybody's got some secret grief or sorrow. But here's the thing. Jesus is alive. And you don't have to go it alone. You don't ever have to go it alone. That's the message for Easter. Don't be alone. Don't be alarmed over the past. Don't be alarmed over the future. Don't be alarmed at all. Or about anything. For he is not here. He is risen. Just as he said. Amen. We join in singing the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. 
Jesus. 